It really is so exciting for me to watch the tiny house movement grow, as all across the globe, people are seeking out smaller and simpler spaces in which to live. Here in France, that is no different. And today we've traveled to Nantes, where we're about to visit a young couple who have built their dream tiny house. Hi Celia, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Good day, yeah. Nice to you, meet man? you. How are you too? I'm very well, thank you. It's lovely to be here. And oh my gosh, your house is just so charming. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> how did you both come to be living in a tiny house? Well, uh, we've been waiting for this tiny house for almost two years now. So it was really like a dream for us. And um, for me, it was really uh, for ecological reasons and because I was really minimalist and I was decluttering a lot. And we had previously we had a um, like pretty big house and we were like using half of it. And it was just getting on my nerves. <laughs> and for you, it was a bit different. Yeah, <laughs> it was very simple. I don't like to move, you know, <laughs> with uh, a lot of luggage and everything. So in case we are moving another time, we've got a house with us. <laughs> And it's like a snail, you know, with his little house on the back. And that's perfect for me. <laughs> I love that. It certainly is. And this is actually the very first tiny house that I've seen in France. Yeah. So could you tell me a little bit about the tiny house movement in France? Are they becoming mm. quite popular or is it still quite an unusual thing to do? Well, it's still uh, quite rare for the moment, but we didn't build the tiny house ourselves. We called a builder, which is a baluchon. And they have like a really big order, a big order list. So it's getting popular, but still it's quite um, hard in France because there is no regulation around tiny houses. So we are not allowed to, uh, to just buy a property and put our tiny house on. It's not possible in France. So it was quite difficult for us to find a good parking spot. But we are lucky enough to have um, my mother who has a great property here. And she has like a big, big garden. So we're lucky to be able to park our tiny house here. But we're actually like illegal. So we don't have the consent of the city and the mayor to be here. So that way, what kind of... <laughs> We're yeah. hiding. Yeah, <laughs> hiding. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, the main reason why it's not quite... Popular yeah, not popular at the moment. It's not legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And mm. that is just the common story. And that is exactly how it started out in America yeah. and in New Zealand and in Australia. Yes. It was people who just said, this is something we want to do. And they did it without asking for permission. And yeah. that is how movements start. So congratulations <laughs> to both of you for being pioneers and not being afraid. Yeah. <laughs> And now talk to me about the design of your tiny house. Uh, we chose a red cedar for the outside. Uh, we chose the color, which is yeah, green. green. <laughs> uh, but we didn't choose the design. It's Baluchon. Uh, Leticia designed it. Uh, and we were like, OK, we love it. <laughs> so <laughs> the biggest part for us was the inside, not mm. really the outside. Fair enough. What size is the tiny house? How big is it? Uh, uh, it's six meter fifty long okay. and two meters fifty large. That's another thing that if you want to go on the road, this is the maximum length you can have. Also, the weight has to be less than three tons to be able to go on the road. So yeah, you cannot do everything you want uh, as you do, for example, in the USA. Or can, you can build like. The house. Yeah. <laughs> and really. put wheels under it. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Very true. And oh. in New Zealand, we work under quite similar constraints. So yes. I can definitely empathize with yeah. you on that one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really love the look of the house from the outside. And I'm excited to see what's inside. Can yes, we take a look? Of yes. Course. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Walking into this space, it just feels incredibly welcoming, doesn't it? We tried to <laughs> have something very welcoming and uh, also very bright. We mm. wanted uh, to have the light even in winter and we really love it because Balichon made our wish true. <laughs> They certainly did. And especially down this end where you've got this lovely workstation and just look at that yeah. view you have out the window. Yeah, we love it. We really love it. Yeah, it just 
gives the impression that you are always outside, always surrounded by nature, and that was really one of our dreams to have like a lot of windows in our tiny house so that a lot of light could come in and we just live with nature and it's so amazing to be connected with nature like that, yeah. Yeah. And Celia, the office space is quite important for you as well because you run your business part-time from here, don't you? I do, yeah. So that's why it was really important for me to have a big desk with my computer because I work about two or three times a week uh, in the tiny house. So yeah, it was really important for my own business to be able to work from home and it's really nice. I'm so glad each time I work from home because like, look at the view, it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> It is a really spectacular office. And can you tell me about your business and what you do? Yeah, I actually launched my own business last year. It's an online spiritual shop. It's called The Woo Moon. So it's the contraction between uh, woman and moon. So yeah, and we do uh, sage and crystals and uh, candles. And I also write little books about uh, menstrual cycle, which is really important to me to uh, talk about that uh, for, um, for women. And uh, ob about also um, moon rituals and yeah, so that's what I do. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations on the launch of your new business. Yeah. I wish you all the success with that. Thank you so much. And then behind you, we have your kitchen. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> uh, we wanted to have, uh, I wanted to have a yeah. big kitchen uh, because I use it every day a lot. Uh, yeah, he's the cook at the house. <laughs> gotcha. So I really needed a uh, huge space to mm. put everything in. And it's great to see that you've got both the oven as well as the countertop elements. Yes, I sometimes <laughs> love to use the oven and only the oven and the stove. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted a gas stove. Uh, also, the only electronical device we didn't want was a fridge. Yeah. So. It's a bit more space for us. Uh, we can store a lot more. So how do you get on without having a fridge then? There are many things that you don't need to put in the fridge, like eggs, like uh, your vegetables. The only part where we could be a bit struggling would be cream, butter, or uh, meat, but we don't eat meat, yeah. so yeah, it's that's what easier. I wanted to say. It's uh, that we are vegetarian, so that's really uh, convenient. It's, yeah, it's convenient and easier for us to be able to not have a fridge. Mm. And um, during winter, it's really simple because we just put our stuff uh, on on the outside and just it's perfectly cold. And during summer, it was a bit of a challenge, um, but we plan on uh, building like a little. Uh, outside fridge uh, next year so yeah I think we'll figure that out. <laughs> what and a good idea. Yeah. Not having a fridge was important because there is not many storage uh, in the house so well it's easier like that. Mm. Absolutely and you're right looking around there is not a tremendous amount of storage space in here so oh, yeah. how do you get by? Uh, do you have enough space for your things? Yes, we do. Uh, actually, uh, the struggling part was because it was for the clothes, mm -hmm. uh, but we figured it out. And yeah, and we are quite minimalist, so we just have the basics we need and we love. So that's also a good way when you live in a tiny house to just uh, declutter a lot of things. And I was quite surprised because when we moved in, we were like, OK, where do we put all of this stuff? And it fits perfectly. Uh, in the tiny house, so yeah, it's good. So where do you store all of your clothes then? They're all in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. okay. Can we take a look in the bathroom then? Yeah, of course. All right. Of course. <laughs> Again, this is a really lovely space. There is all of your storage, I can see. Yes, we have two baskets for Damien, two for me and one for our underwear. And we can store everything in here. We also have this where we can hang our clothes, so our uh, coats and jumpers, for example. And uh, yeah, we don't need any more <laughs> any more space. That's perfect, <laughs> yeah. definitely enough. And then you've managed to build in quite a nice size shower as well. Yeah, it's actually a regular size uh, for this shower. And uh, well, it's really convenient for us because we're not so tall. <laughs> I think that you are <laughs> almost at the top of the... <laughs> I'm okay in yeah, here, I can get by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really, really convenient, yeah. Mm. Nice. And then the composting toilet as well. Yeah. 
So we have a composting toilet that was really important for us uh, for ecological reasons. So we have the compost in the garden and we empty it about like one time, one once one, a week. Once, twice yeah, a week. Yeah, once a week. And uh, yeah, works perfectly too. <laughs> Fantastic. And then above us we have your sleeping loft. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is really nice. I love this indirect lighting feature that you have on the wall. Yeah, I was so, I just really wanted like little fairy lights and Damien doesn't really <laughs> like fairy lights. So Badichon did this little, yeah. Uh, construction here with the light and it's so cool at night when you just have these ones uh, light on and these ones too it's so cozy <laughs> I bet and it looks like you've got another room behind that wall as well yes we have a little bedroom for the future kid and for the moment uh, it's just like Damien who relaxes uh, at night <laughs> he reads a lot uh, in this little bedroom it's really cocooning and yeah really mm. nice space to be uh, at night we don't sleep at the same moment, so I can uh, yeah. read just behind and it's easier to go to bed afterwards. <laughs> it's really nice to have that option, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. And I love that you've future-proofed the space as well and considered room for a child. Yeah, it was really important for us to be able to imagine the future because we didn't want to buy a tiny house and just two years later sell it because we have uh, two kids and we cannot... Uh, Live in this space yeah. anymore. Yeah, so that was really important and we totally imagine living here with two kids. So that's our plan. <laughs> Absolutely, I think that would be lovely. And so how long have you been living in the house now? Uh, it's very short. It's, yeah, it's we've lived there months. during three months. Yeah. Right, so it's just been... getting started, just about to come into your first winter. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> yes, so we've moved in in uh, July, so it's been three months only. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's going to be our first winter, so we have to get organized to yeah for the wet clothes and the wet shoes and so on so we kind of figure out what we can do to counter that yeah well no doubt i think this is going to be a really cozy space in the winter yeah i actually really love it when it's raining outside and just laying in the bed it's so cozy and yeah mm. i really love it because in the summer it was really nice too because it was really like all the windows were open all the time but it was hot like very on the hot. very hot days it was, yeah, it was like kind of an oven in the tiny house. So yeah, we were kind of struggling at night to fall asleep, but yeah. The problem with the tiny house is not mm. about cold, it's about hot. Mm. <laughs> so you've been living in the tiny house now for three months. How are you adapting to tiny house life? Well, <laughs> really uh, good. <laughs> very well. <laughs> yeah, we're really happy in a tiny house. We didn't face any problems. Like, we are so, so happy. It's so cozy. And, uh, yeah, I just love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just three months. So we'll talk about it in a year, I think. <laughs> I think. And what was the cost in building this home? It was 75,000 euros. It was quite a investment for us but um, what was really important for, to us is that uh, we didn't have to borrow uh, money to a bank and we were lucky enough to have uh, the money to be able to buy the, the tiny house and just like be owners. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And 75,000 euro, how would that compare to the cost of buying an average house in this area? 75,000 euros, it's a huge sum here. We could have a lot more space buying an apartment or a small house outside of a big city. But it was important for us to have a huge garden, uh, to be surrounded by nature. And also it's still okay because all the materials are good materials. Uh, the durability of the house is high and we will have this house during a lot uh, of years. Well, this is quite a good investment, actually. I still don't realize that it's really my house. <laughs> when I look at it, I'm like, oh, whoa, it's so beautiful and so perfect. How, yeah, this is just like how I imagine it in my dreams. And yeah, it's really my safe place. It's so calm, so peaceful here. I'm living here now and I don't imagine living in some uh, normal house now. Mm. It's kind of strange because uh, when I'm thinking about this place, 
I don't think I've lived in another space before. <laughs> no, it's like, what was I doing before? Why did I need so much space? And well, I don't need it. And uh, now I'm happy. I'm not happier, but I'm happy. And I think it's the most important thing is this place is my happy place. <laughs> Well, I think your home here is just so beautiful. You can really see how much love has gone into the construction, and I'm sure you are both going to be very happy here for mm -hmm. a very long time. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Celia and Damien have built such a beautiful home for themselves here. It really is wonderful to see just how much care and attention that they've poured into the home. And one of the things that I especially like about it is the way that they've future-proofed. They know that they want to have kids and they've designed a home that can accommodate their future wishes. Over the next years, this space will grow and evolve with them. And I am so excited to see what happens and what their future will bring. I want to say a huge thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, supporting our channel and helping to make what we do possible. I've been playing Raid for a couple of weeks now and I've really been enjoying it. It's one of those games where there's just so much going on and you can really get pulled into it. It's been so much fun to discover and level up new champions and now you can play Raid both on mobile and on your desktop. The game is cross-device, so you can play with the same user and switch back between devices wherever you want. The graphics are amazing in the PC version, and the game is super fast as well. If you want, you can even find me in the game under the name Living Big, and if you're quick enough, you could even join my clan. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click the special links, and you will get 50,000 silver and a free Epic Champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Raid are amazing for sponsoring our videos, so please, if you do enjoy what we do, show them some love back, go click the links in the description, and enjoy playing the game. It is completely free, so good luck, and I'll see you there.